Hey everyone, today I'm in my garage and I'm going to be building this compact ultralight workbench based on Ron Polk's design. Now if you're like me and you have to share your garage with some cars, you need a workbench that's easy to set up and take down, something that packs away really tightly and small so it doesn't take up too much space, and most importantly, it's a workbench that is used for a variety of tasks. Stick around to the end of the video where we're going to see just how light this balsa plywood workbench weighs. So here I am using my Festool track saw and the TSO parallel guides to start cutting out the pieces for this workbench. Now I'm using a 3 quarter inch balsa plywood. Now this plywood is super lightweight. It weighs in at only 31 and a half pounds. And uh, I'm not really sure where you could get this anymore because uh, I got this when it was on a sale. Uh, they were getting rid of all their stock at a plastic supply store. Now I have heard that they use this in marine applications as well as RVs and campers because it's uh, so lightweight. Um, so I'm not really sure where you could get it, but um, I happen to get 15 sheets of this stuff and for this sort of a thing it's uh, going to come in really handy. Okay, now that we're done cutting out all the pieces, we're going to use our Shaper Origin CNC to cut out all the holes in this, on these stringers as well as the sides. And then we'll be able to put it together. So I've set up my workstation here for cutting out with Shaper Origin. So what this is is a handheld CNC and it uses these marker tape to, dis to figure out where it is to locate its position. It's kind of like GPS for the tool. And so I've used this uh, board over and over again. Rather than wasting the tape, I've created this board. It's permanent and I uh, use it for multiple projects. It's on a 3 quarter inch MDF, which is the same thickness as what I'm cutting so that the shaper origin can slide over top of this surface. And then underneath I have a half inch MDF. And what that does is it allows me when I cut through this cutting piece here, I go a few millimeters deeper and that spoil board is going to not, uh, is going to get cut up, but it's going to protect my workbench. Okay, so now I've got this piece. This is the side of the uh, compact workbench, and I'm going to cut out the three side holes for tool storage on this piece. Uh, but before I do that, I have to keep it from sliding back and forth and moving around. So I'm going to use some double-sided sticky tape Now that I've secured this uh, cutting piece down with double-sided sticky tape, I'm going to register a grid against its bottom edge and side so that when I bring in the design to cut out these holes, I'll be able to orient them relative to this bottom X and Y axes. Okay, so now that I've entered in the parameters for my grid, I'm using the uh, quarter mil cutter and I'm using a two mil grid pattern because it divides equally in with my uh, height of my thing of 218. So I'm going to lower the cutter below the surface and I'm going to set the depth, probe my first point, probe my second point, and then the y-axis, probe three. Okay, now that I've set up my grid and I've snapped it to the bottom edge, I'm going to import my design and I'm then I'm going to place it relative to that grid. So I'm going to snap to the bottom left hand corner and bring this over to my piece. I'm going to zoom in so I can get a really accurate placement. Okay, so I'm going to set my cut depth to 10 millimeters. I'm using a quarter inch cutter. I'm going to do a 0.2 mil offset on my first cut and then when I make my second cut I'll make that zero to cut it out perfectly. And when you do all of that you're going to have to z-touch because I have a new bit in here. And some glasses.
Okay, I went just one millimeter lower. The plywood's a three quarter or 18 mils, so I went 19 millimeters and cut it out just fine. Okay, now rinse and repeat. I got uh, one more of these to do and then I have to do four uh, sideways pieces. Okay, so now it's time to start the assembly. So Ron Polk suggests that you uh, lay out all your screw uh, holes and pre-drill everything before you assemble it so you get everything nice and consistent. Also, these screw holes are gonna be aligned right next to each uh, dog hole so they'll hold the thing much more securely. Wow, that is very light. Well, I'm not sure if this is gonna be strong, but uh, we'll see. It's super light. Um, I think once we put it all together, the torsion box uh, is gonna actually be reasonably strong. We'll see, I'm looking for a table that I can cut my um, plywood on. So I'm not looking at, you know, putting a whole bunch of white oak on it or anything. So I think this might work out. We'll see. It's certainly gonna be the lightest thing anybody's ever made. Wow. All right, so I'll finish there. Now, what I'm gonna do is, because this balsa isn't the most durable and it's also very porous, I'm gonna add a layer of Arborite on top of it and then I'm gonna drill my MFT holes. And it's just gonna be much more durable and it's not gonna soak up any liquids or uh, paint or anything like that.
All right, now that I've uh, finished putting on the Arbrite on both sides, I'm gonna switch over to my Shaper Origin and I'm gonna put my Shaper Tape down and I'm gonna cut out all the dog holes on the surface here. Now, here what I'm doing is I'm laying out tape on a board and I'm gonna use this template to cut out all the holes on the table. And uh, I got this idea from Stephen Hastings and he had a comment on my last video about how he made his workbench. It's very useful. I'll put a link in the description down below about how to set up one of these boards. But uh, this is a great way if you want to save some tape and if you're going to make multiple workbenches, you can use the same template board to cut out all your holes. Now you can buy something like this commercially. Uh, you're going to probably spend several hundred dollars. And, uh, you know, I'm not super worried about the accuracy of this board because uh, I'm not actually using my table to make square cuts. It's mostly for clamping and registering boards against when I want to align stuff. But uh, this is going to work out just fine. Okay, so I've completed this template and uh, I've got this five by six grid that I've drilled out and then I've got these four locator pins. Each hole I was cutting, I made two helical passes, one rough cut and then one finish pass. The cutter I'm using got dirty from the glue in the plywood and the laminate, and I had to stop several times to clean it. Now at this point I've spent several hours cutting out all these holes. I thought I'd try something different to speed up the cutting. So I switched to drilling out the rough hole with a half inch drill bit, and then I used Origin to cut a single finished pass. This really sped up the process, and this is what I'll do next time. I have to cut out 200 holes. Now, the last thing I'm going to do after I finish cutting this out is to put a slight chamfer on all the holes. It just makes putting in the dogs a lot easier. Well, I'm super happy with how this workbench turned out. The balsa plywood made it ultra lightweight, weighing in at only 42 pounds. With the addition of the laminate on the top and the bottom surface, it makes it durable and waterproof. Now this template that I used to cut the dog holes out with Shaper Origin helped improve my accuracy over the last bench that I made. And in the long run, if I decide to make more tables, it's gonna save on some tape. One pointer that I would share is that when using templates like this with Shaper Origin, use quarter inch material. This is a half inch sheet and what I found is when I'm cutting 200 holes and I had to cut them twice because I would do a rough cut and then a finish pass, that added a lot of extra time, about an extra hour and a half to two hours of cutting just because this is a half inch sheet versus a quarter inch. So if you're making a template, use a quarter inch sheet, it's rigid, it's strong, it won't warp or bend, but it'll also not be that so thick that you're cutting especially the helical function, cutting forever to get through the template just to start cutting the workpiece. Now in terms of the accuracy of the layout using this template, it's pretty good. I don't really have a way of measuring it precisely. Now that being said, I'm still going to rely on my rail square if I want to cut board square. And these holes will be used for clamping as well as alignment when I'm using dominoes or other tools. Hey, if you enjoyed today's video or learned anything along the way, then please smash that like button by clicking on the thumbs up. And if you haven't already done so, subscribe to my channel. I'd really appreciate it and helps us out immensely. Thanks for watching everybody. See you in the next one. Wow. Twice.
Ow. 